Okay, so I'm not actually being chased here. This is a reenactment of something that happened nine years ago. You know what time it is. So a good buddy of mine, Bolts, asked a question if I've ever been attacked by wildlife. Now, that is a really fun story. I'm gonna have to actually take you back to roughly where it happened. It was literally in my backyard. So this will be nine years ago. We had first moved here from Illinois and my brother and I were actually getting acquainted with our four acres of woods here. This time we wanted to see what was, what was out further back in the woods where the plants were a lot more overgrown the trees were bigger and older, and uh, we just wanted to see if we could find any cool lizards, snakes, bugs, anything like that. What we didn't realize was uh, we were actually about to make one of the craziest memories that I have here in North Carolina. The vegetation here is rough for me now, um, oftentimes being taller than I am. Now, I'm, I'm about a foot taller than I was back then. Oh, man. So you can imagine just how tall these plants were to me back back in 2012. So we were back here looking for bugs and stuff. And I remember we came to an area with lots of plants a lot like these when this massive black animal just thumps to the ground and starts barreling at us through this foliage. It was like a scene out of Jurassic Park. Like, you can't really see the thing, but all these plants are just moving out of the way of it. It reminds me of like the raptor scene from uh, Jurassic Park Lost World. You can actually still see the tree that it jumped out of. Big pine tree, you can kind of make out right through that little hole in this canopy here. What was it? I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. Um, some people have said bear, but Bears haven't been seen in my county in North Carolina in decades, and frankly, the sound, it wasn't a bear. And I've seen some pretty big dogs. This thing was bigger than any dog I've ever seen. I've worked with Great Pyrenees, I've worked with Great Danes. Um, this thing was massive. So the only thing that could have been that size and be a cat would be some kind of panther, some kind of cougar. Um, and if it was a cat, with how fast it was moving and how not fast we could move at that age, uh, there's no way, there's no way I'd be here telling you this story if it was a cat. The best way I can describe the sound that this thing made was uh, if you've watched Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, there's this lizard thing that Obi-Wan rides. That's the closest sound to anything I've heard, real or fictional, that sounded anything like what chased us in the woods that day. The last we heard of it, it turned as we were sprinting away and splashed into what I now know as the seep. We heard it like, we heard a turn and it went deeper into the underbrush over there. We heard some splashing of its paws or whatever it had, talons, I don't know, um, as it ran through the mud. We couldn't find claw marks on the tree. We couldn't find any footprints of it. The only evidence that this thing had ever been there were the trampled plants that, it, that had moved out of its way when it was chasing us. To this day, we have no idea what chased us in the woods and have never seen nor heard anything about it since. So that's kind of the theme for today's Q&A. Things that have shocked me on my adventures and stuff like that. I'll, I'm also gonna get around to everyone else's questions this time around, make sure I do fulfill my promise of answering everybody's questions from the Q&A. Got lots of good questions. So, uh, a good segue from that story is um, Bilbo Goonie asked, what are my top three most unexpected events while out exploring? Well, that would be number one, but to satisfy your question, I'm gonna give you the next runner up three. So number four, so we're gonna go from four to two. Number four would probably be the first time I found a snapping turtle out here. Considering I've lived here nine years, the fact that it took me almost seven years to find my first snapping turtle in this yard, um, that was pretty unexpected. I would say number three would be the uh, devil crayfish, the ones that build those mud towers. Where I came from in Illinois, we didn't have anything like that. So, and because I, I hadn't even seen those until I started actually making trails out in the deep part of the woods over, literally over there, where I found them for the first time. I had no idea what I was making those. And 
the fact that I hadn't even seen crayfish in the stream, um, I thought there's no way they could be crayfish. And then sure enough, finding crayfish in those mud towers was super unexpected. And number two, I'm actually kind of working my way over there now. One of my favorite spots, right by the pond where the creek, you can see over there, the creek flows into here and fills this whole floodplain here. Um, and this gets really deep when it rains. Um, this is also where I found the snapping turtle, right in that corner where that creek wraps around there, right in that little gully there is where I found the snapping turtle for the first time. But right here, under this piece of tin, I found both a dwarf salamander, which are super rare in my state, and a helgramite. Now, App Nasty wants to know, what animal genuinely scares me? Like, what, what's an animal that if it was right next to me, um, my heart would drop into my stomach? And uh, the answer to that, you're gonna hate this answer, is humans. Um, I am a huge, huge introvert. People who, who know me, they know that I pretty much lurk out here in the, in the woods or in my room editing on my computer. That is, that is my life. Um, you know, like, when I'm with like friends of mine who are like, you know, also into wildlife or like people who I'm close to or whatever, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty outgoing and, you know, I'm the typical moderately crazy, somewhat sarcastic guy that you see on here. But you surround me in a room full of strangers and I'm not drunk. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is the animal that scares me the most. But, but I get what you mean by this question. You actually want to know what animal out in the wilderness scares me the most. And, Herbie actually also asked, um, what creature creeps me out the most? Um, and to that I would have to say centipedes. Centipedes creep me the hell out. If a centipede is on me without me knowing, and then I discover it there, um, I, I have to control myself not to just like do one of these. My buddy Jack Swore Wildlife wants to know when I'm gonna make it down to Texas because he wants to get me some real snakes. Frankly, as soon as I can right now, budget wise and workload wise, um, I can't, but like, you know, this is, you know, this and freelancing is, is what I do full time. So like my schedule, I get to make it. If I, if I had the time and the budget to get down there, I'd be down there like next week. Um, right now that's not realistic. Um, I would hope either later this summer, it, it's going to depend on a couple of different factors later this summer or sometime next summer, but in the next 18 months. And Bindi Orange wants to know what my favorite species of viper is. I'm gonna give you two answers to this one because I have two answers and two because you know, you've been a big fan of the channel for a long time. I love seeing your comments, I love seeing you on all the videos, bud, um, glad you're here. The favorite viper that I've worked with, I would say Copperhead because one, I've worked with them a lot now and they're kind of familiar to me and they're also really cute looking. Favorite viper, that I have not worked with. I actually have two um, that I'd like to work with. And it's Gaboon Viper and the Golden Lancet Viper. Gaboon, Gaboon, English, Spencer. Gaboon Viper, because they are really stupid looking, but also really cool looking at the same time. Golden Lancet, because, correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong, but the Golden Lancet Viper is basically endemic to one little island off the coast of South America. It's a cousin of the feral ants, super deadly, but also super rare. They're common on that island, but super rare in the sense they're only found there. If you've been following the channel for a long time, you know I'm kind of a shiny hunter when it comes to wildlife. I like to find weird and rare stuff and venomous stuff, and this one is both rare and venomous, which makes it very exciting to me. What's my favorite state to herp in? Now, I've only herped in three states. I'm pretty new to the game, but uh, it's I, I've herped in Louisiana, Mississippi, and North Carolina. Um, based on what I've found, I would say my favorite state to herp in would be Louisiana. Um, but some of the targets that I have this year, if I find half of them the rest of this summer and fall, um, I think North Carolina will take the cake. Shruti wants to know if I have always been comfortable handling animals like this or something I had to build up to. It is very much something I had to build up to. I have always wanted, I've never been like super scared of animals, but a lot of them, there were a lot of creatures I always like to have at a safe distance. Um, 
I had to build up a tolerance to actually doing hands-on work and doing a lot of like really close encounter type interactions. Yeah, it's definitely something I had to build up to. And then, forgive me, I have to flip this while I answer your question. I'm always looking under here. Oh, there's an Aramoth Toad. Um, Harrison, if you're watching, you know you remember this exact piece of board when you were over last time. I said, we usually get narrow mouth under there and right there, a narrow mouth toad. Oh, a little bitty thread-legged bug. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Look at how little that one is. I saw a bigger one earlier today. Yeah, you can tell I'm really distracted by animals. Look at how tiny that is. Tips for getting over your fear. Um, anything that makes you nervous or you're afraid of, one of the things you really gotta do is just keep exposing yourself to it. For me, I just handled a lot of spiders. I started with the ones I was more comfortable with. Now, what I did as well was I took a bit more of an, an aggressive approach. So I wanted to handle things that scared me more than spiders, because if I could handle things that scared me more and be okay, it would be pretty easy to handle the spider. So I was handling centipedes and wheel bugs and uh, velvet ants, things that the bite, things like, you know, velvet ants and wheel bugs, they have a much more painful bite than any spider that you'll find out here. Um, so, you know, things like that, I was basically just pushing myself and pushing my boundaries. And over time, um, you know, wolf spiders and fishing spiders got pretty easy. And now I've, you know, if you've seen, I, I've already handled brown recluses, I've handled black widows. Um, and you know, it just gets easier over time. But the thing is you have to do it a lot and you have to do things that really push your comfort zone. Maria Gallup wants to know if I like jumping spiders or wolf spiders better. <sighs> See, all the other questions up till today were really easy. This is a really hard one because jumping spiders are really freaking adorable um, and really funny looking. I love working with them. But wolf spiders are really special to me because they were one of those things that really helped me build my tolerance for working with spiders. I think, I think I'd have to say wolf spider in the same vein. Mary wants to know what my favorite arachnid and insects are. Arachnid, believe it or not, it's not a spider. It's not a scorpion either. It would be an amblypigid, which is sometimes called a tailless whip scorpion or whip scorpion, depending on who you ask. People who've been following the channel long enough know that if there's something I like more than anything that's dangerous, the stuff that I like the most is the stuff that just looks really freaking weird. And if you know what an amblypigid is, they look really freaking weird. Insects, um, generally phasmids. My buddy Zach down in Louisiana, good, good friend of mine, asked me, when am I gonna look for the Carolina pygmy rattlesnake? Now, I keep telling you, buddy, I'm still getting out the Louisiana videos. I don't want to spoil any of my future story arcs, but one of my next targets after I finish all the Louisiana content and a current project I'm working on right now as we speak here in North Carolina is the Carolina Pygmy Rattlesnake. Um, they're super cool looking, so of course I'm going to get one eventually. Um, but yeah, yeah, quit spoiling my arcs. Another human wants to know, what's the craziest insect or arachnid I've ever seen? <sighs> I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. So let, me, let me think. In, in person, probably either a slug moth caterpillar, a thread-legged bug, or something that I can't... I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, if I open it up to all invertebrates, um, if I open it up to all invertebrates, the stuff that I can't tell you yet because that would be spoilers for future videos. But um, probably a slug moth caterpillar or a thread-legged bug of the stuff that I've seen. Or maybe one of those armored harvestmen. Those would be pretty crazy looking. Clout wants to know, how can I catch a mantis? And to answer that, I'm gonna give you more of a practical answer. I'm gonna show you how to catch a mantis right now. Because I'm looking at a praying mantis as we speak. There it is, probably a female. Uh, hard to tell at this age, it's a nymph. Um, yeah, basically, you kind of want to just, oh, well, it can be a pain. It's hard with one hand, too. But you can basically just kind of uh, chase her up to the top of this stick here. And eventually they'll just walk on you like that. You don't want to pin them too much because they are pretty delicate. You don't want to hurt them. 
They're really pretty little animals. I love working with them. All right, so you spelled your name kind of funny. I'm assuming it's Eyeless and just you were being creative with your letters, but um, he wants to know if I can find a Tigrosa aspersa or one of the various Hogna wolf spiders. Now, I'm not sure if that's a request for a video, like if you want to see that in a My Wild Backyard video, like me go out and find one of those guys, or if you just want to see if I can find them, I'll answer both. I love wolf spiders and I love big wolf spiders like the Hognas and the Tigerosas. So if I found one, I would definitely make an episode on it. Um, and as to can I find them, uh, I'm working on that. A lot of fantastic questions. Thank you for asking them. Really appreciate all of the engagement. Really appreciate, really appreciate all the support. Um, this has been a crazy journey so far and I'm so glad to have all of you along with for the ride as I learn to become a wildlife expert. Hopefully you'll, t you'll uh, tune in for the next episode. Uh, I post videos every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And the next episode, we're actually working with a super awesome venomous snake. I cannot believe we were able to catch one. You're gonna like this. So as always, I hope to see you Saturday, but until then, don't forget to get out there and find your adventure.